Hi there. I'm going to take you through uh, making some useful byproducts with uh, the potash uh, and charcoal that you uh, empty out of your firebox if you have a fire. So I'm going to take you through the tools you'll need, the process, and some of the rationale for why we do this and the importance of it. So we have a wood fire heater and we run nine appliances from uh, that energy system. One of the benefits of having a wood fire heater is the relationship you have with the local forests that are where we get our wood from. Each year those, that relationship deepens and, um, and each year we work out what returns we can make to the forest. One of the best things to return to the forest is potash and activated biochar which we also use in the garden and we also um, use in our human newer system. So there's the, the char sifted with the first sift. We get all our uh, buckets or and equipment to do this from the local tip. This is the, the next level, a little bit finer. So those holes are about four mil across. So we're separating, putting all the char uh, into one area. So that's the finer and the rough char. It looks it's still a bit grey like there's potash on it. There's a bit of a stain of the potash, but most 95% of the potash is off the char. Okay, so that's the, the second, the second sift. And we do a third sift to make it really fine. And this is the third and final sift, which just takes out those little tiny last bits of char. It's really important to separate your charcoal from your potash because they function in very different ways. There's the last bit of the, the charcoal. So we use the potash as a fertilizer in the garden. But not so much for our annual veggies. What potash does is strengthen or um, aids woody growth. If you see a forest after it's had a fire go through it and all the new growth is coming through, it's because of the potash. It has an incredible ability to promote growth. Show you what we do with the charcoal. So we got this old galvanized bucket from the tip. We've got a crowbar. And we're just pounding it, pulverizing it. I always try to keep my back straight, my knees bent. You can just do this work all day um, if you get your body in the right position. Look down, check over, but keep your head up as much as possible. And this is what it looks like after pounding it. There's a few larger pieces, but mostly it's uh, char dust. Oh, this is the urine. You can use other things, which I'll get to in a little bit. Um, so we're going to activate the crushed charcoal with urine, which is a nitrogen, or urea is a, is a nitrogenous material. 
we have a huge amount of urine in our house, just as you would in yours. And it's just such a shame to waste this precious resource. Pretty much just leave it for two weeks to really soak in before we would use it in the forest, we use it uh, in our human newer system, or we dig it into um, the, a garden bed. So that's got to really soak in so that the urine becomes the char and the char becomes the urine. If you don't activate or load your charcoal with a nitrogenous uh, material, uh, a wet nitrogenous material, then it will starve. It'll take nitrogen out of the soil once that char goes into the soil. So what you need to do is pre-pack uh, the charcoal with a nitrogen so it acts like a slow release. Now the charcoal is fantastic, or bio activated biochar is a slow release fertilizer. It uh, helps, it absorbs moisture and keeps moisture in the soil. It is a great ecology for beneficial um, soil microorganisms. And here's some other nitrogenous materials you could use. We make a weed tea, so we weed a row uh, of veggies and rot that down, so it's an anaerobic um, compost, and make it concentrate. And this is a poultry manure tea where we clean out the poultry coop every uh, so often and um, soak that in water, let it rot, and then do a concentrate, make it concentrate. So you can add those concentrates into... Uh, the biochar. This is this is a um, a poultry tea in the making. So it's just water, uh, poultry manure, and straw. This is a finished activated biochar. It's been uh, sitting for about two months. So the minimum is two weeks, but you can sit it there as long as you want until you're ready to use it. Well, I guess, whoops. Well, well I guess that's it. Um, if you've got any questions, just uh, put them in the comments. Uh, hopefully that will get you started. Um, even just, not necessarily um, with making potash and activated biochar, but um, get it get you started just thinking about what returns you can make, what gifts you can give back to the living of the world. Over to you.